Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to my studio. I'm doing handheld because I want to move around so I hope it's not too wobbly. Um, this room in fact we made, it's, we're in what was the barn. Um, I'll show you the entrance to my room if I go over here and turn around slowly so you don't feel dizzy. Um, that's the entrance, I made that curtain some time ago. Patchwork of course. I'll just show you, just so you know how you get in. If I pull the curtain back, you'll see that um, <laughs> bare plasterboard, like I said, we're still renovating. But to have some little steps going up, covered by a rug because they're not finished. And there's my slippers because I was clip-clopping around, so I took them off. Um, so that's how I get in. I'm running through the whole house is this bar. It's probably not very interesting. Um, so you have to duck when you come down in here. And you see the bar there going along my shelf. I'll just come around a bit. It's actually holding the house together. <laughs> um, it's a, you know, like, like when you make a house out of cards. Um, it just collapses if you don't have some support running through. My partner, who's uh, my husband, who's an architect, said that you have to make triangles in structures so that they're sound. So the bar kind of makes the third arm of the triangle with the roof. Anyway, this is not a video about architecture, but it's just to explain the bar. And I wanted to keep some of the stone wall. So um, I asked him, him being my husband, to put the wall only halfway up. And then I made a shelf. And the wood of the shelves are actually the two sides of a really um, falling to bits old oak bed that was in the barn. It was no use as a bed anymore. But the two sides ID woodwormed and sanded and waxed and so on, and they're the top of the shelf. And on there I've got all my textile books. And um, up there on top, I'll zoom in, that was my first prize that I won, the first time I won a prize in a competition, um, which was in 2011. Um, I haven't got the piece in here, it's in another room, but it was a seagull. I'll show you it one day. And then I've got my little um, apple box crate made into shelves. And there's all my sticky things for when I do gluing. Um, it's my sort of old books that I've picked up here and there, which may or may not become junk journals at one point if I can bear to cut them up. And then there's my vintage Singer sewing machine. That's not a family one, unfortunately. We did have one, but it got lost in a move. Uh, that's a replacement from a, an antique shop in England. And if I back up into this corner, um, you can see my cutting table, and which sticks out into the middle of the room so I can walk all around. It's just two IKEA breakfast bars stuffed together. And in it, at the bottom, this side, the big tubs are mostly paper, kind of recycled packaging paper and stuff like that, uh, large pieces. And then the little tubs are smaller pieces. And the last two, my fingers coming in, the last two on the end there are actually fabric of various kinds. And they're kind of archived. I, I keep some fabric out and accessible that I use and the rest is archived. And then the bits out that I use when it starts getting low, I top it up, if that makes sense. It's in that spirit of not having too much to choose from. So I kind of, you know, keep it away. If I turn back the other way, um, oh, here, I'll just mention so I don't forget. There's my tins. I've got various things in inks and threads and buttons and stuff like that. And um, this little rope basket's got some bits of vintage lace in, dyed and not dyed. You may recognise the cloth pouch. Um, and on there I've obviously got my, my string collection, my painting things, my cutting things, my measuring, you know, all that stuff in various pots and jars. Um, spinning so you don't get dizzy, I hope. That door there, I won't open it because it's freezing cold in there. That's um, my son's room when he's home. And it's got a little Indian. I didn't make that, I bought that in a lovely um, Indian shop in Glastonbury in Somerset called Dillyways. Um, and on the wall here, there's some of my old work when I used to work by machine and very bright colours. And ignore the log cabin, I'll come back to it. And there, do you see? Really bright colours. Really bright colours, I don't do that anymore. But, you know, I still like them, still happy with them. Those two actually were uh, juried into, I used to be a member of the Quilters Guild of the British Isles, the contemporary quilt arm, and they were juried into an exhibition that toured 
I think only Europe. I don't think it went further afield than Europe. Um, and then they came back to me after a year or two. And they're hanging up there. Um, so if I go down here, this big old chest of drawers came from a junk shop in Elminster where I used to live. And that houses all my vintage household linens. If I just show you, excuse my shadow. It's very dull day, so I've got to have the lights on. You see, so it basically all looks like that. There's all various kinds of vintage linens um, and stuff. That's all in there. And on top of here, I, I, it is like this all the time. I haven't staged this. I like it to look like this. <laughs> um, maybe it's the librarian in me, but it's important to me that it, it looks nice in here. I'm not one of those people that can really work in, in a mess. You know, that's just me. You do you. Like I always say, you're going to get my shadow now. I'll go around the other side. Excuse the shadow. So these are all my various stitch journals. I think there's a couple. Um, in other words, one in my bedroom I know that I look at every now and then. But this is most of them in here. Those aren't stitch journals. I'll show you those one day, those other books. And some bigger scrolls. That's on cardboard at the moment. I'm trying to find something big to put it on. Um, stitch journal, stitch journals. You'll recognise maybe the borrow one or one of the borrow ones. Um, there's another scroll laying there in progress. And there's another long piece again in progress that needs a scroll to go on. The memory books that you may have seen, my granny's and my auntie Lily's. Coming round, sorry about the shadow. <laughs> I could do bunny ears on the wall, couldn't I? Bunny ears! Um, here's my sewing machine, which is a big Janome or Janome, I hear it say both said both ways. Quilting machine from when I used to do free freehand machine quilting. When I say it's big, I mean it's got that extra space under the throat. It's very handy these days for mending horse blankets, um, but I do still use it sometimes. The rice bags you'll recognise. There's a little bit of EPP, that English paper piecing, that was going to be a bed quilt, and then it was going to be a cushion, and now it's, I think it's about 20 years old, and that's as big as it got. Um, but that's fun to do, if you like that kind of thing. In all those boxes are mostly kind of half-stitched things and scraps that I've worked on and every now and then I'll get them out and go through them and, and reuse them in some way. In those boxes down there is more lace and stuff I think. And in that basket are some old clothes that I'm going to process for the cloth. Um, I'll talk about this log cabin while I'm here. This is a log cabin that I'm working on. I love log cabins. I just love the light and dark and the possibilities that you've got to play with shade and so on. It's a bit raggedy because it's obviously all in blocks at the top. Excuse me, I'm just taking my glasses off because they're close up and I can't see. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, so all those at the top are individual blocks and I've pieced them on the sewing machine. So I've stitched them on on the sewing machine the machine stitching on the back onto a foundation because a lot of it was quite thick and there was a lot of it to do and I just thought well you know it's not cheating just piece it on the sewing machine because then once it's all pieced what I'm now doing and I've done that little center white square already with embroidery so you can see that excuse the shadow and this piece and then I've pieced these two at the bottom this is a section and I've had that downstairs and I've just, sorry about the shadow again, I've just been stitching that in the evenings and that's all got the hand stitch in it already. And then I've just taken this piece down, I've just brought it back up so I can show you. And you see my needles in it, I've just started stitching on that. So I'm going to stitch it section by section and then join the sections together. So I'm not doing all that heavy stitching with that great big thing on my lap, if that makes sense. And that may, I'm doing exhibitions this year with my group CQ West, um, which is a group based in the southwest of England where I used to live and they still have me as a member even though I'm over here. Um, if it's finished it will hopefully go into those exhibitions. Um, so moving round, this big old trunk down here um, used to be our camping trunk for our clothes when we used to go camping. Don't really go camping now, to be honest my whole life's like camping. You know, in a good way, because I like that. <laughs> um, so anyway, it's now here and it's got all my whole sheets in. Sheets I haven't started cutting into yet, rather than the smaller bits that are in those drawers. 
Um, those two were, I did an online workshop with an artist called Kate Thompson, which was collage and painting, and um, the faces were image transfer, uh, which you then paint over, because I can't draw a face to save my life. Um, but I was quite pleased with the effect. And then you made these little, she calls them vestments, you made these little, that's actually, you know, cloth and lace stuck on. And that one up there has got the, the little vestment in front. This here is, if I can get back far enough without backing into anything, that's my design wall, which is just an old sheet, because I have a few, um, staple gunned onto a batten of wood top and bottom, and then hanging on hooks in the wall. And on there I just hang all kinds of things, stuff in progress, unfinished stuff from, you know, a long time ago that you might call a, uh, a PhD, a project half done, or a whip, work in progress, or whatever. I don't have UFOs, I don't like that term, unfinished objects. I like to leave a possibility that it will be finished, or at the very least it will get ripped apart and turned into something else. And there's another scroll here. This came from an online workshop that I did with an artist called Gwen Headley, which was painting on fabric. She used acrylic, but I used uh, my inks made from natural dyes. And I must really, I really, um, I do like that. I want to do more stitching on it at one point. And up there are some of my rosettes that I won in England at various exhibitions. Um, that's another older piece. Well, you see the date on 2014, so that's 10 years old now. And um, that represents the earth, which is one third earth and two thirds water. And I did math mathematically calculate the areas so that it was exactly a third to two thirds. Um, a bit of a nerd. Um, here is my window. The uh, mosquito blind, because in summer if I have it open, I have to have the mosquito net down, is broken. So I'm sorry, it's hanging all ugly, needs fixing. And, and that construction you can see there through the window is our terrace, which doesn't look great from this side, but in the summer I hope to do some filming out there. And it's lovely, you sit there and you look down the horse field. Unfortunately, that's apparently, according to he who must be obeyed, the only place to hang the satellite dish if we want to have any kind of television, and apparently we do. Um, but it's right in my view. But if I try and, you know, get, get round, the, ignore the satellite dish, I call it Goon Hilly. Those in England will know what I'm referring to. There's a place down in Cornwall with those great big huge radio um, antennas. Anyway. Um, that's our horse field. I don't know where the boys are. I have two horses. They're probably down the hill there. It goes right down the hill. Now all the woods that you can see are ours. Aren't I lucky? I'm so lucky. And I go out downstairs through the side of the house. I'm pointing but you can't see me. That way. That way. You can't really see from here. You see that bit of green there, just this bit. Just to the right of there is a little entrance, and so I go out the side of the house into the woods, and then there are paths that I've made um, all through the woods where I walk with the dogs. Twice a day. I'm so lucky. There's my jade plant, which lives on terrace in summer, but it comes in here for the winter. And then I'm coming around again, and here is my desk with my contraption, you will see, set up there. And this is where I put my camera in that little um, bracket. And this is where I sit with that light on so you can see and make my videos. And that's where you see my hands. Um, here are some drawing stuff. So I do do some drawing sometimes. Uh, there's my chair. Hanging on the back of the chair, actually I've just got this out, it was folded in a box. Is um, I, ca I call it the overlap quilt because it, it's log cabins, it's a lap quilt. But I didn't do seams, I just overlapped the strips. Um, it's been on the go for years and I plan to do all this fancy stitching into it and then I, you know, it got put away. But I've just got it out and I must either finish it or get the cloth out to use somewhere else because it's a shame to just have all that. That's all natural dyed cloth. Um, it's a shame to have it, you know, folded up in a drawer. Uh, this little old table here from a junk shop with a cloth on also from a junk shop, more tins of buttons and broken jewellery and things. And these are my other journals, which are, this is, I'll show you this quickly. This big old thing is a, another borrow type inspired journal. Um, I call it catching everything that drops. It's sort of a personal scrapbook really. Um, 
So if I go visiting anywhere or someone gives me a, a nice card or something like that, um, I stick it in there. But it's, uh, do you see, it's, it's basically a junk journal. I won't, I won't, maybe I'll do a flip through at one point, but there's some things in here that are a little bit, you know, not private, but stuff. That's from my lovely friend Cara. Um, but it's a junk journal, you know? So I do oughts, I love that word oughts. It just means odds and ends. So that's that. So that, that one lives in there. And the others I sketch sometimes. I'm not showing you my sketching because it's dreadful. It's only for me. Um, and collage and, you know, paper-based things rather than um, cloth. So that, those are my, that kind of journals. Um, you've seen my string. People have asked about how I organise my cloth. That, again, is a very personal thing, I think, because it depends how you use it, how you work. I have things organised by size, pretty much. So I start here with my scraps. Sorry about that noise. That was the power pack for the microphone trailing on the floor. The, technically, this top basket is small scraps of, of white linen, but you see that there are things in there that shouldn't be in there. Because that happens, because it's on the top, things get stuffed in. And underneath is the little scraps. I just found those, they were masks, you know, that I made during the pandemic. I just found them and um, I'll get the cloth out of them. So that's little tiny scraps. And then the next size up is in this basket, I think. No. Nope. This basket, yes. And I make these little bundles and I use cloth twine or if I haven't got, you know, just a strip of cloth. So these are bigger scraps but still small. Of all, all kinds, it's some indigo in there, there's some commercial cloth, there's, you know, all, it doesn't matter what they are, just by size. And then these are sort of bigger, again, sort of fat quarter-ish if you're a quilter, you know, about a quarter of a yard. This is indigo, which should be in with the natural dyes, but there isn't room for it because there's too much of it. That's all indigo that I've dyed myself. Um, and then down there, which I won't open, but there is bigger cloth again. So it might be from clothes, you know, like a big old skirt or something like that, or it might be commercial cloth that I've been given or I've saved from when I used to buy new cloth and things like that. And back in there, is um it's white i can't remember oh yes i know it, it's um clothing that i've thrifted that's white mostly cotton and linen for eco dyeing at one point when i get around to it um this is wool scraps that's the only thing i keep oh that's bits of sheet small bits of sheet yeah this is wool scraps which i keep separate because it's quite specific wool i don't tend to combine it with um you know, cotton and linen and so on in my collage work. This I talked about when I made the, I think it was a stitch journal with a cloth cover. My old blanket, I'll just show you quickly since it's here. Can you see, can you see the darn? I bought this big old blanket in a charity shop and I got it home and on, it was sold as a dog bed. I think it was two pounds. I got it home and in the middle was this whopping great darn. And I'm, oh look a darn. And I'm, I've cut all around it and saved that bit. I don't know what for. We'll see. Something will happen one day. Um, so, yeah, so that's basically the answer to that question is I sort by size um, because that's how I work. So I'm either working on little collage bits, you know, or I want bigger bits for piecing or I want bigger bits again for, you know, whole cloth or, or something else like that. And down there is vintage trims in that basket. And in that plastic tub is my denim scraps. In the drawers are stuff, you know, stuff, rotary cutters, rulers, tape, um, stuff. Not very interesting. But yeah, these two IKEA units together, they're just the right height for me because I'm quite tall. I'm five foot seven. Um, or I used to be. I might have shrunk. I don't know. I still feel five foot seven. They're just the right height for me to stand and work. I don't like to work on a lower table. I get a bad back. And that's my little chair from a junk shop in Somerset. It's a nursing chair, but I'd like to sit there and stitch sometimes. And I think I've shown you everything. If you have any questions about anything that you've seen and I haven't talked about, you know where to put it. Can you see my finger? Down there. 
Um, but meanwhile, I hope that a studio tours go was okay. And um, thank you very much for watching. And I hope you join me next time for more cloth tales. Bye bye. Some wrestling going on in here at the moment, so I'm hoping it will calm down at one point. You see why there's a noise on the floor. I do apologise. Anyway, oh, they're going out of shot. I'm, I'm. It's in the stand, so I can't. It looks quite violent, but they love each other, really. Oh, now they're going to go and race something down the hallway, I expect. Anyway, that's enough of that.